More than a year after the devastating and deadly floods in eastern Kentucky, some students are still not back in the school buildings that were impacted. Such is the case in Buckhorn. Repairs and renovations are still a long way from being finished. WYMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to school leaders about getting ready to start another school year in another building miles from the damaged one. Once again, A.B. Combs Elementary School will become two schools for this coming school year when classes start later this month. It'll be the home to Buckhorn School as well as an elementary school, both seriously impacted by the flooding. A.B. Combs was used as part Buckhorn School, part Robinson Elementary last year, and when classes start August 28th, this is where students will make the trek to again. The school is about a 40-minute drive by car from the Buckhorn community, but by bus it takes quite a bit longer. It was the best option after floodwaters breached the school in Buckhorn and destroyed the elementary school in Ari. A.B. Combs was quickly renovated to house students last year, and even more work was done over the summer. Pictures line the walls reminding students and teachers of their history in hopes of what the future will soon be. If you've ever been a part of Buckhorn School or worked there in the past or you've been in our building, you know uh, what a family we are, and we are, we're a family. And school officials say they really don't know when the Buckhorn School will be ready for students. It could be July of next year. In Perry County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. Phil, thank you. School officials say part of the delay in renovating the school in Buckhorn is the fact that they had to hire a new construction company. The Pikeville Fire Department is training with some new trucks, replacing decades-old equipment. A new squad truck and fire engine were dropped off in Pikeville today as firefighters work to learn the trucks and load them up with hoses and equipment. The trucks are identical except for the specific equipment loaded onto the squad truck. The squad truck behind me here will serve dual row, so it will have uh, fire pumper operations as well as rescue operations. So it gives us a little bit more capability uh, to respond. Hear more about the new trucks and their importance coming up tonight at 6. The Challenger Learning Center in Hazard is in the process of adding a new exhibit. The new exhibit is named Moon, Mars and Beyond. It is meant to immerse visitors in a space experience with robotics, a large model rocket, and much more. Robotics exhibit fabricator John Siegel says that getting to create exhibits like this is rewarding because he's making space come to life. Sort of um, charge it with a little bit of a magical uh, persona. You, you want to not only tell the a uh, story that you could see in a textbook, you want to bring it out into something tangible that people can actually really jump into and see react to them. The Moon, Mars and Beyond exhibit will be opening in late September. WIMT's Madison Carmouche will have more at 6 about why this exhibit is important for folks in the region. $144 million, that's how much money tourists generated in Pulaski County in 2022. Officials in Somerset are saying that's the most ever generated by tourism. Lake Cumberland Tourism Executive Director Michelle Allen says the record-breaking numbers are also saving folks in Pulaski County on their taxes. So those tourists leave behind dollars. And if we didn't have them, each household would have to pay an extra $419 in taxes. So when anybody is complaining about us having a big festival because the traffic is crazy, or for our lovely visitors from Ohio that come to Lake Cumberland, I want to say, but they're saving you money and making you money in this area. The figures come from a group hired by the state of Kentucky to help communities observe their tourism. Well, the calendar may say August, but it feels more like September across the mountains, across the region into this afternoon as we are dry under a gloomy sky. Here's a live look in London, Hazard and Pikeville. You can see plenty of cloud cover back in the distance, but notice those temperatures 70s, lower 70s for Hazard, also Pikeville and check out those dew points in the lower 60s. So that means the air continues to be dry as you walk out the door this afternoon. Check out these feels like temperatures. It feels like the upper 60s and lower 70s in South West Virginia and most of us feeling like the middle to upper 70s, but be sure to prepare for the feels like temperature to increase by Sunday and Monday, possibly about 20 degrees warmer by the end of this week on the radar. We are dry, but those clouds do continue into this evening as well. 
in this dry weather also going to continue into tonight thanks to that area of high pressure over Missouri. But notice off to the north a front over Minnesota, also the Dakotas, and that could spark maybe a few showers as we go into late Thursday, also early on Friday. But as you can see, those rain chances over the next five days, few and far between. Most of us do remain dry as high pressure does continue. A small chance of a stray shower by Thursday night into early on Friday, but some awesome weather on the way for Friday before more summer heat by the weekend. Those details on the way in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thanks. Schools in Louisville are closed until Friday after many students were left stranded last week when a new bus routing system failed. Officials say the situation is made worse by a shortage of school bus drivers. CBS's Adriana Diaz reports from Louisville. This is how Latasha Gomez's kids are spending what should be their first full week of school, passing the time at their mom's nail salon. So how frustrated are you? I'm very frustrated. I feel like um, when I expressed it with uh, someone over the phone in transportation, she kind of just blew me off. A new bus route plan in Kentucky's Jefferson County, meant to make the bus system more efficient, backfired last week in part because its computer algorithms didn't factor in enough time between stops, causing massive delays and worry among parents. He didn't get home till after 7 o'clock, and it was horrible because I had no clue where he was. School superintendent Marty Polio says the mess was driven in part by a bus driver shortage. One of the greatest errors I think we had last week was not having effective communication with families, and we are correcting that. It's not just Louisville. Chicago public schools say they only have half the drivers they need, and classes start next week. There have been delays up to an hour long in Knox County, Tennessee, and in New York City, there's a looming strike by school bus drivers. Every city and every state in the country uh, is suffering from this. A top issue is pay. The average bus driver's salary last year was about $42,000, and that's only if a driver works full time. Many do not. I do understand that the shortage, but you want them to do better. I want them to do better because it's trickling down to our, the safety of our kids. Parents like Latasha Gomez want schools to practice what they teach and come up with creative solutions. The school district says it will launch an app that will allow parents to track their kids' buses, which will be a relief to many. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Louisville, Kentucky. Transportation experts tell us the driver deficit has been a problem for years, but the pandemic made it even worse with drivers retiring early or leaving the industry altogether. Coming up on First at Four, some positive numbers are out detailing retail sales across the United States. Plus, we could go back to the 90s by this weekend. Also, early next week, the details after this break. WYMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as they 